So I'm going to present my results of a study comparing uh, Vivity with the Ray1 EMV lens. The, these are my disclosures. Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my fellow surgeons at OCL Vision um, and the optometric team and also our research and development team have all contributed to uh, providing the data and analyzing the data and putting together some of the results and graphs I'm going to show you today. So this was a retrospective study that occurred over six months. We looked at consecutive patients, which is all patients that were having the technology. And we looked at subjective outcome measures with the RayPro questionnaire, as well as all of the standard visual acuity and refractive outcome measures. There were 820 eyes of 517 patients uh, included, and approximately 400 eyes in each group. Just a summary of how the lenses work. So the Ray1 EMV lens works by the induction of small amounts of positive spherical aberration. And the Vivity lens works by the induction of negative spherical aberration, as well as an elevated portion of the lens which uh, elongates the wavefront and increases the depth of focus. Most patients had bilateral implantations, but some had unilateral implantations, as you can see. And the range of lens powers and cylinder powers presented is also shown here. In most cases, we targeted emetropia. So all patients had emetropia targeted in the dominant eye. And some patients had emetropia targeted in the non-dominant eye, although many patients had an, a level of myopia targeted in the non-dominant eye. Um, and that's what you can see when you look at the chart here, the patients where we were targeting um, more than minus 0.25 or minus a half or minus 0.75. What's uh, uh, notable is that there were 10% more eyes in the Vivity group um, that were targeted minus 0.75 to minus one. So it's possible that we targeted a bit more myopia uh, in the Vivity group for various reasons. Postoperatively, uh, the results showed very tight refractive outcomes. So both groups showing the vast majority of patients were within plus or minus 0.5 diopters of intended, and pretty much everyone was in one diopter uh, of intended. And the percentage of eyes reaching the final refractive outcome um, within plus or minus a half or one um, was well above the normative NHS values that have been published in the past. These are the uh, visual acuity results. And uh, the notable things here is an improvement in binocular uncorrected distance visual acuity and in monocular corrected distance visual acuity in the EMV group. So statistically, patients were likely to have better distance vision uh, in the EMV group. Um, but in the Vivity group, slightly better unaided reading vision was found, um, which was about three letters. So three letters on the chart better. Um, and there was no difference at all in the two groups in the uncorrected intermediate visual, visual acuity. 50% of patients binocularly had uncorrected intermediate vision, visual acuity of 0.2 logmar or better. And the distribution of monocular and binocular intermediate vision was very similar in both groups. And again, not statistically significantly different. The cylindrical correction was also excellent in both groups. Um, in the Ray1 EMV group and the Vivity group, very tight results for plus or minus a half and plus or minus one. 90% of eyes in the Ray1 EMV group and 88% of eyes in the Vivity group um, had post-operative refractive cylinder of 0.75 or less. And more eyes in the Ray1 EMV group had a post-operative refractive cylinder of 0.25 or less. So slightly tighter cylindrical control in the Ray1 EMV group. The patient satisfaction questionnaire, which was sent to 300 binocularly implanted patients and a response rate of almost 42% showed 84% satisfaction with the Ray1 EMV and 78% satisfaction with the Vivity. So a higher patient satisfaction rate in our group of patients with Ray1 EMV. And we think that that is likely to be due to the improved distance vision, although we don't know for sure. So in conclusion, uh, the Ray1 EMV demonstrated significantly better uncorrected distance and corrected distance vision than the Vivity lens. The intermediate vision was equally good. Good uncorrected near vision uh, in the EMV group, uh, but it was slightly better in the Vivity group. Um, it may be the case that that increase in reading vision is because we targeted slightly more monovision in the Vivity group. Um, but we did see a more effective post-operative cylinder reduction in the EMV group. Um, and finally, we saw higher patient satisfaction rate um, with post-operative vision in the Ray1 EMV group. For future considerations, we would like to do a subgroup analysis 
uh, to compare the exact levels of monovision that were targeted so it can be compared as like for like. And we're curious about whether targeting a little bit more monovision uh, in the EMV group may make the lenses perform identically for, for reading vision. Um, and we could look more carefully at the questionnaires that we send out to try and classify exactly what the causes were of dissatisfaction in the minority of patients that said they weren't satisfied for whatever reason. One of the things that was surprising about the study is actually how similarly the lenses perform in terms of results or the results that we find to be most meaningful. We found a statistically significant improvement in distance vision, both uncorrected and corrected, in the EMV group. And we found a small statistically significant improvement in uncorrected reading vision in the Vivity group. But both lenses perform really well, both at intermediate and near and distance. I think these parameters are important because they really show us what patients are able to see. And when patients are accessing premium or advanced technology lenses, they want to know, will they have good distance vision? Will they have good reading vision? And will they need glasses? And the results from our study support that and allow us to be confident in offering the lenses to patients as an option for them.